And a Merry Christmas. Oh, come on, everyone. Let's share, let's show the Christmas spirit. Merry Christmas. All right. Well, if you're not feeling very merry right now, I am sure that you will be feeling merry after the program. I believe that the Lord will bless our program tonight. Um, our principal, unfortunately, is not able to join us. He is currently off island, and so I am. Uh, I have the privilege to welcome you all on behalf of principal in our school administration and our teachers and our students to our December Christmas 2022 Christmas program. Uh, as you'll see, the title of our program this year is called A Wonderful Christmas. And there are two moving parts of our program. We have the acting happening on my right, and we'll have the singing happening on my left, and some singing will be happening here in the middle. But, the students have been working really hard for the last two months to bring the play and the songs to life. And I want to thank all the students for their hard work. And they worked really hard and we placed the rest in God's hands. And we know that he'll take it all the way. And I'm sure he has a blessing in store for each and every one of us tonight. Amen? Amen. So tonight, the play, the actors will be taking us all on a journey, on a quest really, on how we can have a wonderful Christmas this year. And so you'll see different scenes. We'll visit the different traditions that we do in Christmas, right? But it seems like every time something, something's missing without that main ingredient. Spoiler alert, it's Jesus. We need Jesus to make Christmas wonderful, right? So um, tonight, please pay attention to the dialogue. If there's any technical glitches, please bear with us. We'll do our best to make sure it flows as smoothly as possible. But tonight's program is really a whole SCA School family effort, from the decorations to the playwriting, which was written uh, by our staff members, and the songs being taught, and the soloists learning their parts, cleaning the gym, setting the lights, everything. So many moving parts, and I just want to thank all of our school staff and students for working so hard to bring this program to you guys. And we're so blessed that you guys have decided to spend your evening with us. So I won't keep you long. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with a word of prayer. And then I'll invite Mr. Ronaldo to the front to offer a word of prayer. So please, bow your heads for prayer. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Precious Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we are gathered together in this place, Lord, because of you. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for our sins, where we have fallen short, to give you glory. And we invite your holy presence to be in this midst, Heavenly Father, that we may experience your presence in a special way. Lord, I lift up to you the participants of this program. May you bless and honor their efforts, Heavenly Father, that your name may be honored and glorified. We pray for your blessing, and we pray, Heavenly Father, for your peace, your joy, and your love, that we may receive the message and be transformed as a result of our gathering in your presence today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we jump to our program, just a quick announcement. If you need to use the bathroom, we have bathrooms for uh, both genders on the hallway down here. So just make your way around these boards and you'll see a hallway. The women's bathroom is at the far end and the men's bathroom is closest to the entrance. So without further ado, welcome and welcome to a wonderful Christmas play. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. There are fears a rapidly spreading virus has reached Australia. This is a rapidly emerging situation where there is not a cause for alarm. The first US case has been detected. There's confirmation the coronavirus has reached Australia. China is urging its citizens not to travel abroad as it struggles to contain the virus. We will be standing up Christmas Island as a quarantine area. I have today declared that the coronavirus presents a public health emergency in the United States. 
Firefighters in California have warned that hot weather is hampering their efforts to contain a huge wildfire. President Biden is now considering declaring a climate emergency. Ukraine's commander-in-chief is warning of a fresh Russian onslaught on the capital, Kiev, in the coming weeks. The Russian military has begun a brutal assault on the people of Ukraine. Russia has rejected a proposal of a Christmas truce. A bloody war breaks out, enforcing more than six million people to flee their homes. In life, normal to you. When all you had to worry about as a student was making sure your shirt matches your shorts or missing an assignment. Life was so much more simple and easy back then. But now, I have to wake up every day anxious about what comes next. What new tragedy will befall the world? War? A new disease, even? Maybe even another violent protest? has turned upside down, and I can feel that it's desperately trying to turn itself right side up. But it just can't seem to do it. Huh. If only there were some way to make life Uh. What is that sound? Oh. You know what? It's probably Mrs. Hudson. Uh, Mrs. Hudson, are you are you playing music? Um, no, Sherlock. I'm in the kitchen making lunch. I think that might be Dr. Perry's new room. Can you please turn it off for me? I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Um, I think her phone might be right next to your chair. Uh. Uh. Dr. Perry, my trust. Woman. Always replacing her phone. Anyway. Where was that? Ah, yes. Being the great detective that I am, I feel that I should take it upon myself to make to figure out a way to make life wonderful once again. All these are precarious voices. say again, peace on earth and goodwill to man. Aha! I've got it! Christmas! The one way to make life go back to normal again is Christmas! Dr. Dr. Perry, I've got our next case. I'm going to figure out a way to make, to give the world Christmas this year. Oh, uh, but not just any Christmas. We need an absolutely wonderful Christmas this time. I'm going to compile, I need you to compile a list of things that usually makes Christmas more meaningful. I'm going to prepare the clue board. Uh, hello. Let's see if it's coming up. I'm taking time off work, so good luck solving this on your own. Wait, wait, Dr. Perry, you can't go. I need your help with this. Fine. But, 
I'd like to be compensated for it. Oh, come on, Dr. Perry. But what about the Christmas spirit? I mean, can't you do it out of the goodness of your heart? Aww. No. I'm a $5,000 Christmas bonus. What? Oh, come on. Try and make it $2,000. $3,000. Deal? Deal. I would have done for five thousand.
Did you not notice? The husband was distracted the entire time. He was on his phone for most of it. Well, I mean, he said he was going to be right back. I'm sure he'll be back to help decorate him as soon as he's finished with his phone call. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, Ten Bucks says he's going to leave and go to the office. No, but Christmas decorating is what makes Christmas so wonderful. Charlotte! Charlotte! I have to go to the office right now! My boss really needs me to be a work emergency. Are you kidding me, Chris? You did the same thing last year. Why don't you start making family time a priority? Ever since you got that promotion at work, all you have time for is work. Why do you keep on making me feel guilty for getting my promotion, huh? Okay, I just didn't think it would take up all of your time, okay? Well, it's because of my promotion that I can get all of these decorations, your clothes, and all your fancy purses. Should I pretend that? It's not that I don't appreciate all of that, okay? I just really want us to spend more time together. Well, you can't have the best of both worlds, Charlotte.
All right, Dr. Perry, what's your next tradition on our list of leaves? Well, it says right here that the next tradition on our next of leaves is Christmas shopping! And now that I've got an extra $3,000 to spend on Christmas. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dr. Perry, this is no time for your personal parents. Sherlock, this is research. And I'm just saying with our extra time. <laughs> extra time. Dr. Perry, every second counts when you're trying to solve a case like this. You know, you're right, Sherlock. But I was going to buy you a gift. Wait, what? Don't worry about it. We must investigate this lead. Wait, for the gift, though. Oh, hello, babe. Long time no see. Oh, hey, Brian. It's been a while, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Christmas shopping? Yeah. You? Same. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm looking for the new MacBook Pro, but I can't seem to find it. Me too. I saw a bar saying you guys were having a Christmas sale. You got it, right? Well, let me tell you, the lights were out the door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sold out. There's no way you guys are sold out already. Could you look around, please? My son is really looking forward to this. Yeah. Well, you should do the whole shit this out here. Um, Thank you. Did you're getting it for your son? Yeah. You? Yeah. He's 17. It's crazy. It's sad that he won't be around to help with the business much longer. Yeah? My God. He's so ugly. Okay. Gentleman at his finest. The top of his class last year. He even got valedictorian. Yeah, well, not to brag, but my son is the captain of the team, of the varsity team, you know, and he's training to progress with his professional career and yeah, getting him the laptop will help him with his senior year training. Yeah? Well my son's been studying hard all summer finishing advanced placement courses and is hoping to get into Harvard. You know what Harvard is, right? <laughs> I'm sure he'll do well if he can get it just fine. I'm getting him the laptop to help him with the research he's been doing. One day he'll be just like that. A distinguished doctor. <laughs> So sorry, but there's only one microphone. Well, thank you for your assistance. I assure you that my son desperately needs that. I'll go ahead and pay for it. Uh, uh, hold on. Where do you think you're going? I was the first one to ask him to get it for me. Well, my son must have it in order to complete the vital research he's been doing. Yeah, well, my son needs it for his future. As they're playing professional basketball in the future. Yeah, well, I'd say Harvard is overrated. I'm going to take back what's rightfully mine. Oh, my son definitely worked hard and deserves to get this MacBook. Yeah, say someone who sits in air conditioning all day. As if that's anything coming from a shop owner such as yourself. <laughs>
sisters.
All right, Dr. Perry. The next thing on our list is... What are those? Well, I did a little Christmas shopping while we're at the computer store. <laughs> when you in all that chaos did you find the time to do that? I have my ways. I won't even ask. We need a new weed for this case. Uh, just let me grab up these gifts for my niece first. Wait, wait! That's it! That's our next lead! The most wonderful part about Christmas is receiving an abundance of Christmas presents. Come on, Dr. Perry, let's go investigate this new lead.
right? It was really a whole I love to see the Christmas presents. <clears throat> what? Not to worry. The great Sherlock Holmes is still up for the challenge. Sherlock, time is ticking. And there are only a couple days left till Christmas Day. Isn't this enough time to even solve this case? Aw, oh, come on, Dr. Perry. You love a great mystery challenge. You know what? Here, drink up this cup of hot cocoa and get yourself into the Christmas spirit. Like the world needs us to solve this case. I mean, you guys wanted to solve this case, right? If you want me to keep on solving this case, say yeah! Yeah! And if you think I'm the greatest detective in the world, say, I love Sherlock! Oh. Hello? Uh, um, who are you talking to? Oh. There's literally nobody here. It's no one, Dr. Perry. Just my uh, imaginary friends. Right. Yeah, that's completely abnormal. Got it. Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Hudson. Sherlock is speaking to the narrator. Oh, don't worry. Oh, no, you'll get used to it. I think this is easy. I'm sure you'll get used to it after time. How is your business supposed to Mrs. Hudson? It went very well, actually. I think this year's program is going to be a big hit. How's the case coming? Any folks been following it? Well, the good news is we know three things that are not the answer to our problem. But we have yet to figure out what makes Christmas wonderful. Well, I have complete faith in the both of you. You'll figure this case out. In the meantime, tell us about dinner. Wait, wait, wait! Dinner! Christmas dinner! Sherlock, a beloved holiday tradition, is hosting Christmas dinner for your friends and family. Oh, that's it! There you go, Dr. Terry. Now you're thinking. Well, let's go investigate this new weed. We'll be right back, Mrs. Hudson. Please, what did I tell you? There is no stopping this week.
I'll be there in you. Come on, what's up? Okay, so Christmas is upon us and we are hosting dinner again. I need all hands on that. Last year, there was simply too much for me to do. So this year, I'm just keeping things simple. All right, that sounds good to me. Okay, so we're just going to make the turkey and mashed potatoes. Okay, let's start with the mashed potatoes. Then of course, the green salad, cheese casserole, fried rice, banana lugia, chocolate pudding, and... Oh, I forgot, we can't have Christmas without the steamed fish. That's Jared's favorite. Ooh, wait, hold on. I thought you said you were cool this year. Is that it? Uh, where is all the heavy cream that I asked for to make the pudding? Um, what do you mean? I bought the two pudding that you asked. I asked for 22! <laughs> How many pounds of pudding did you make anyway? About 10 or 15. What? What do you think that much? I just like to make a few rounds for emergency. Oh, wait, I forgot. We have to make the Christmas cake. It is a part of Christmas tradition after all. The Christmas cake? Seriously? Gloria, you do know that nobody eats a Christmas cake, right? That's not the point. It must be done. Hey, well, honey, why can't you just sit back and enjoy Christmas with me this year? Oh, nonsense. I've had a Christmas for the last 10 years. Hey, look. This, it's not going to end well. I'm not going to try to for the guests to arrive. Oh, still, I'm not making as much as I did last year. It will be fine.
make us kitchen any longer, our lives will come to a dead end. We gotta get out of here.
figured out that we need to make Christmas wonderful. Well, it says that the last, well, the last thing on our list says that Christmas season needs to be a time of church services and it's just like. I don't know what my grandma used to take in church, but there was always this warm feeling I get from going. It's the sense of, of, uh, I don't know, peace? Wait, wait, this is it. I'm certain that this has been the elusive solution to this mystery all along. Going to church will definitely make Christmas wonderful. If you say something wrong. Well, let's go. Time is of the essence. We got a mystery to solve. Well, actually, oh, 
So let's take that, huh?
but they do something. Do not be afraid. I bring you a cause. Rachel. Today in the town of Brooklyn, a savior has been born to you. This is my word. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby in front and lying in the manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor
were saying, Perry, that what the choir was singing? Yes, they were saying that the reason to celebrate Christmas is the birth of Jesus Christ. Could this be the answer that we've been looking for all this time? I still don't get it though. Why does Christmas center around one child being born? He isn't just any child, Dr. Perry. Jesus is the Son of God, and He came down to earth to reveal to humanity the true character of God the Father and to fulfill His plan of salvation for the human race. Plan of salvation? Yes, Sherlock. God had a plan to save the human race when Adam and Eve fell to sin. A plan where He, the blameless Lamb, would come down to earth and die for our sins, paying the wages of sin, so that we wouldn't have to. So Christ died, so we wouldn't have to. Yes, but it gets better. Jesus was resurrected three days later, overcoming death and the grave, giving us victory over sin. Huh. Wow, I mean, that's amazing news. In fact, I think that's exactly what we've been looking for all this time. Right, uh, one question though. Mrs. Hudson, if you know the answer the entire time, why couldn't you just tell us? Ah, uh, <laughs> well, if I were to tell you right away, you wouldn't have appreciated it the way that you do right now. You see, you've searched out all the ways that Christmas can be celebrated, but you found that something was always missing, right? Right. Well, that's because all these earthly traditions are meaningless without the good news that Christ came to proclaim. So, what you're saying is, what this world needs isn't just a wonderful Christmas, it needs a wonderful Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. You got it. And He is calling us all to Him so that we can find refuge in this broken world.
so wonderful because we can place faith and hope in a God who can love us beyond measure. So much, so much so that He was willing to leave all the glory and splendor of heaven to rescue us. So, as you go about your Christmas celebrations, we hope that you can remember that the only way to make this Christmas wonderful is to open your hearts to a wonderful Savior. He is our wonderful counselor. The mighty God, Prince of Peace. The one who is strong enough to carry you. Emmanuel, God with us. The one whose love will never fail. So this year, let Jesus make your Christmas wonderful.
Bless us all. Bless us all. 
Give us your peace. Help us to love. A little bit more. To care. A bit more. Thank you, Father. Give us your peace as we depart. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, God. Gentlemen, before we wrap up our program tonight, we want to take the time to recognize the hard work and effort of some special students who have made this Christmas program possible. So, when I call them up, please give them a warm round of applause. So first off, let's give a big round of applause to our cast, spending lots of hours practicing their lines and their scenes. Give it up for our side characters. Give it up for our supporting ladies, actresses, played by Simone Montano, Gianna Tomai, Cassandra Rummick, Sophia Galando, Caitlin Nampig, and Joy Perman. Take a bow. Now, give it up for our supporting actor, played by Jude Adolf. Carlos Martin, Ezekiel Pagaris, Norman Cervantes, JT Mee, Juan Nato, Sean Hupon, Noah Hadley, and Charlie Itaki. Take a bow. And of course, give it up for our leading actors. First up, our wise landlord, Mrs. Hudson, played by Marsandria Russell. And of course, the savvy detective assistant, Dr. Perry, played by Charlene Sakura. And of course, the big man himself, the greatest detective in the world, Sherlock Holmes, played by MJ Russell. Uh, tonight would not have gone as smoothly as it did without our stage crew. So please give it up for our curtain crew. Bring back the curtains at the right time. Thank you. Take a bow. Next up, give it up for our choir stage hands, the one who goes and fetches the classes to sing on time. Give it up for our choir stage hands. Take it down. Thank you, ladies. And give it up for the ones who does the fast scene changes, our stage and prop crew. Give it up for our set and prop crew. Take it down, gentlemen. Tonight. Before we close out tonight, 
Así es como, en nombre de mi